economy see uh, the indian economy it's a very basic chapter you have uh, when i talk about indian economy anyway you guys know it pretty well that three basic sectors are there in indian economy the very first chapter is uh, the very first sector is the primary or the agricultural sector the second sector is known as the manufacturing sector or maybe the industrial sector and the third sector is the tertiary sector or maybe you call it as the service sector for that matter so growth in this sector is only because there has been a tremendous growth over the years in primary and secondary sector and you need to support the primary and the secondary sector with the services that are being offered by the people who are working in the tertiary sector so that is the reason that the tertiary sector's contribution into the gdp that's the gross domestic product has improved drastically over the years so let's see and look into the set of questions that we have in this for example in what ways can employment be increased in urban areas so when you have uh, a question like that you have to give suggestions so please try to start with an introduction that is urban employment for example when you have been asked to uh, you know specially about that urban areas so you have to tell what are the characteristics in this uh, employment so the main characteristics is that it is an uh, you know we have uh, both open employment in this case which is an offshoot of rural unemployment you have sort of open employment and educated unemployment it's like voluntarily people uh, you know at times sit back at their place and uh, you know uh, there is insufficient economic development there is a uh, defect in the education system or maybe the industrial growth has not reached up to that level that it can absorb all the people of the country so there are some remedial measures that you can uh, answer or you can take up and you have to give solution for example the very first now i'm going to address the issues in what ways you can help it so here are the remedies to the question that they've asked i've given a good introduction please take care that you have to give a very good introduction and then you have to suggest remedies for example don't just write points like this if you have uh, to give uh, if you supposed to give a proper presentation of your answer talk about education system and then write the point talk about decentralization of industries give this point so it's you just frame the pointers underline the pointers and then just give away the information related to that pointer for example in the third point there is you can encourage uh self employment or maybe you can give the pointers of small scale industries so the teacher comes to know that yes you are you know going to talk about small scale industries then you are going to talk about techniques of production so of course you have another point right here and finally provision of a work on infrastructure and the last point is of course you have to take care of infrastructure so these are some of the areas that you are supposed to highlight and address when a question is being asked to increase or suggest you uh, have to suggest measures to increase the rate of urban employment so this is what how your answer should look like jumping on to the second question explain how public sector that is the sector that is owned by the government controlled by the government that's public sector how does the public sector contribute to economic development of the nation see um economic development you know the uh, it's on the government that they have to ensure uh, that uh, a huge amount of money is invested in public sector and the government has to take care for the welfare it's not working for the a uh, profit as much as it's working for the welfare of the people for economic and social distribution of wealth among the people so public sector has to undertake all those activities and responsibilities that are not shared by the private sector though it provides the service at very reasonable rates the government has to heavily invest into infrastructures like roadways railways bridges 
electricity dams uh, generating dams the construction of uh, other stuff like that but this though the government has to invest in all those sectors but this is anyway going to help accelerate the economic development of the nation so you've addressed this point that yes public sector undertaking so please market and pointers for example the first point in this case can be that public sector undertakes activities which are important for the development of the public in general and you have to understand that even if it takes it takes uh, the government at time has to take the economic burden on itself to ensure that the people stay employed and yes the second point can be it also requires so this is going to be the first point in this case this is going to be the first point this is going to be the second point in this pointer it provides a uh, services at lower rate the third important point please ensure that you write the points in bullet then you have to talk that all the important infrastructure projects may be roadways railways bridges etc require huge amount of uh, public investment or investment made by the government but of course it's going to accelerate the economic development of the nation so this is going to be the concluding statement or you can segregate it into another bullet point okay guys so this is a very important question uh for this exam year so when you are answering a question that is for one mark ensure stick to the word limit of 15 to 20 30 words if you have a question that is asked for 3 marks please try to stick to the word limit of 80 marks however if you have a question that is for 5 marks please answer it between 100 to 120 words try to stick to the word limit how so how much ever you know the answer try 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 to stick to the word limit the next question is explain the objectives of implementing narega 2005 okay so you guys know this scheme talks about uh giving the right to work to the people uh 100 days of employment is being provided by the government who are actually willing to work but because uh they don't get employment they are unskilled laborers so government is going to take it on themselves that if they get registered and if they're not given employment within 14 days they will be provided with unemployment allowance so this question uh is to be divided into three sections the very first section is that yes it was a scheme implemented by government in 2000 uh for 2000 districts in india second it came into force that i have not written it came into force in february 2006 third point is going to be it is preferred or maybe it is referred as first point this third point this second point you guys know it was implemented in february 2006 an additional point this is also known as right to work because it guarantees 100 days of employment in a year by the government to all those people who are willing to work uh, uh uns as unskilled laborers and however if the government has fail to provide you know employment services to people like that then of course they've been given the unemployment allowance they've been given that so it's just another name for right to work that's narega so that's a very easy question you guys probably know a lot about it so let's jump on to the next question that is explain with suitable example which part of the service sector is not growing in importance so uh, what happens is uh, it's uh, there is a large number of services a large number of uh, options that the service sector actually uh, covers so there are a large number of workers also that have really managed to earn a good living uh, and perform jobs because of course they don't have any other alternative options for them available for them for example Uh, i would say workers who are uh, you know 
engaged in services for example small shopkeepers maybe repair shops maybe transportation activities the cattle owners so this is all that informal sector uh, informal category of the service sector that yet it provides employment services but does not respect uh, the government norms and is not getting importance because people anyway are being uh, you know they're not they, they're being uh, I would say exploited to a extent that even the government can't interfere because it comes under that domain of informal category so you are not registered as a worker you are not paid according to the wage norms so this is an important sector and you and you guys are automatically the people are forced to work under those terrible conditions because there's no alternative option for them so this is that part of service sector that yet uh, service sector has made a great contribution over the years Yet people are still facing issues because uh, their uh, problems have not been addressed it's like they have been exploited to the next level so give a good introduction that service sector yes covers formal informal process of working conditions and it's the informal sector that is or uh, informal part of service sector that is facing a lot lot of criticism a lot of exploitation and needs to be addressed well in time okay so let's get started with the next question that is you have to study the data given in the table and answer the questions that follow so you have primary secondary and tertiary sector in organized sector we have uh, primary uh, people in millions that workers are 2 million uh, unorganized is uh, approximately let's say 240 I'm gonna put it right here in unorganized sector it's 240 then uh, in secondary it's 9 in unorganized uh, it's 54 total comes out to be 63 tertiary 17 uh, 76 and 93 so you have to follow uh, answer the questions that follow in this case so the very first question here is uh, primary sector and specially unorganized sector is providing the most number so if they ask the question that uh, I skip the question which uh, sector provides the most employment in this case so in any case you can see the unorganized sector like we just I'm just gonna speak up the questions for you guys so the very first question is which sector uh, provides the maximum number of employment to the people or jobs to the people anyway you can see the unorganized sector is scattering to the most uh, chunk of the people that's somewhere around 240 million people the second question is what is the total uh, you know number of people working in unorganized sector in all the three sectors you add um, worker people working in unorganized sector the total is 370 million and the last question is uh, has there been any increase in the trend of employment in organized sector so yes you can answer this that you know the uh, employment of opportunities in organized sector sort of has been expanding like people have been going from primary to secondary and jumping onto the tertiary sector but yet it's not at a very good rate or at a very good scale it still needs improvement because we have to adjust people from this unorganized sector to this organized sector so very easy set of three questions just simple answers and uh, the fourth question is which is the most important sector out of it so the tertiary one is the most important organized sector of late we've also observed see the tertiary sector is going to be the most important sector that's uh, out of the three sector which over the time is getting uh, gaining a lot of importance uh, is uh, especially in its I would say organized component so out of the three components in organized section which sector is getting more importance yes it is the tertiary sector 
as the income levels rise you can also address this issue that as the income level rises the people start demanding more services and if they demand more services that's going to increase the production capacity and of course the cycle is going to get kick started now tertiary sector is not playing any significant role in development of indian economy do you agree gives reasons in support of your answer so they have asked if tertiary sector is not playing any significant role i've just told you when i started with the video that tertiary sector has been growing in its importance so you know there's a reference year with which you for example we generally compare our height that this particular year we had this height and this year we've grown up to this level so similarly when i talk about the gdp levels of a country so we compare the gdp with respect to base year so earlier the base year which which uh, with which we were comparing our gdp was considered to be 2004 5 but because at that time tertiary sector was not doing that well of late it has done a tremendous uh, you know work in its improvement so that is why we had to change the base year to 2011 and 12 so that we can contribute and accept the contribution made by tertiary sector in uh, you know raising the bar or the status of indian economy so this i would probably say that we do not agree because its contribution you have to support your answer because its contribution has been steadily increasing over the years uh, as compared to agriculture and so uh, you know manufacturing sector service sector has been doing a brilliant brilliant job and added to the uh, gdp levels uh, over the over the span of last decade or 10 years okay so let's start with the next question the next question is distinguish between open unemployment and disguised unemployment so of course you guys know what disguised unemployment is so unemployment basically you have to give a definition uh, to unemployment before you start with it so unemployment is uh, when you are willing to work but you're not you're getting job and you're not uh, you know able to get yourself employed somewhere so in this case they have asked you to distinguish between so you have to first talk about the first section of the question that is open unemployment guys please don't make a mistake of writing all the points together in a paragraph and that's not going to make any sense so please segregate and differentiate for example it's going to be open employment yes open employment is where the worker is ready to work but he is unable to find any work it can be in any of uh, the three sectors may it be primary may it be secondary may it be tertiary so in this case is open to you know uh, get hold of any opportunity but this sort of employment is so so visible that the person has to sit back at their places whereas when i talk about this guys it's sort of the other name given to this is an hidden unemployment so you can of course write disguised slash hidden unemployment where which is mostly seen in agricultural sector where a lot of people are employed yet they seem to be employed but there's no improvement in the marginal productivity so even if you take out two people three people of the group of five it's not going to impact your productivity it's going to stay the same so it's sort of hidden somewhere it's very opposite to the open unemployment so it's like also known as surplus workers are engaged in a basic activity and if they are removed the production would not get impacted or it would not suffer anyway all right so at jumping on to the next question what do you understand by like we just discussed and you have to explain with an example each from urban and rural areas i just gave you the example of rural area where it can be seen in you know uh, agriculture sector we just discussed about disguised 
surplus mankind employment or you can also known it's also can be said it's in hidden unemployment and a good example would be for example we talked about agriculture activities uh, where you know instead of uh, using five people you are engaging 10 people on the same piece of land and even if you remove or you know uh, reduce the number of people who are employed it's not going to impact your production that's the example when i talk about the uh, rural area and in urban area also if there's a construction activity right and you have uh, a lot of people who are employed underpaid or uh, you know not being paid to the optimum level if you remove three to four of them it's not going to impact the pace at which they are working at the construction site so it's one example from the urban and one example from the rural area would serve the purpose talking about the next question how is tertiary sector different from other sectors illustrate with few examples so this question needs to be attended or given special attention that how is this sector different so this sector is uh, different because this is related more with the intangible activities like you have some sort of services available but you can't feel them you can't touch them you know that you've been provided that service it can be like communication transportation banking insurance health and stuff like that so yes it is also known as the service sector related to trade transportation communication where people are employed and it sort of supports the primary and the secondary structure so these activities you know they themselves in a tertiary sector would not produce a good but rather they support the production process that's already taking place either in primary and would probably increase their efficiency and also provide all the necessary you know knowledge back-end support so yes, over the years, it has become a very important backbone for the development of the country and its progress is dependent on the progress of primary and secondary sector. So you have to illustrate it with the example. For example, the service sector is different from primary sector, which includes all economic activities. Uh, you know because primary sector is related to from uh, related to the nature you have exploitation you have uh, sorry extraction production of the natural resources but in tertiary sector it's also different uh, from the secondary sector because secondary sector is like converting what you get from the primary processing it and manufacturing it uh, or maybe extracting what you get at the primary stage and converting it into some other product so like I said, in tertiary sector, you have to underline what you can underline in this is it in tertiary sector, these activities do not produce a good. The primary activity primary here is connected with extraction. The second important point, the secondary sector is involved, includes activities concerned with X that have uh, activities that are concerned with processing or manufacturing of goods so you can underline this important point so if you've clearly with the help of examples you've clearly differentiated of uh, the difference between tertiary and secondary sector tertiary and primary sector and in this paragraph you've explained what you understand by tertiary sector okay that's all uh, for this questionnaire setup now uh, the pdf link for this uh, uh, content is available on our app and the download link for the app is there in the description box so you guys can go check out the description box and download the app where you can ask your doubts you can get videos and you can get uh, a lot of study material uh, so that's all for the day thank you so much for listening uh, to me so carefully and i hope you guys do really well and until we meet next for the next sprint class please take care stay healthy eat well and stay hydrated bye guys thank you so much